what will you replace these with? Now it's one thing to give up all this stuff, but if you don't fill it with something else, they're going to creep back in. What are you willing to fill it with? What will you fill that void that's created when you no longer need what isn't working for you anymore? In the area of your body, are you going to replace the unhealthy food with healthy food? Are you going to replace the way you were dressing with a, a different way of dressing that more, not necessarily suited to your age, but suited to your personality? And with your relationships, what are you going to replace that with? If you say goodbye to a friendship, what will you replace that, that void with? A healthier friendship, perhaps? A deeper friendship with yourself? What will you do when you are faced with opposition? On this new path that you are on, you'll be armed with tools. We've given you a whole bunch already. I'm going to give you a whole bunch more before we're done. So you have all these tools and you're working away to create this transformation. You're going to meet opposition. Guaranteed. And that opposition could come in the form of people. It could come in the form of your ego trying to intervene. It could come in the form of circumstances and situations. This is life. This is going to happen. Just because you reach that, reach that pleasurable plane does not mean you are not going to be challenged each and every step along the way and challenged once you're up there. That's why it's so important to build a firm foundation, to know your message, your soul purpose. So when these things happen, you can keep grounded and ride the waves of the storm a lot better. But what are you going to do? How are you going to handle that opposition? Especially when it comes from friends, family. Are you going to give in? Where are you going to find the strength to carry on? Support network. Who? Who is in your support network? By now, you may have talked to others about this journey you're on. Perhaps you haven't. I encourage you to look at the support network you have in your life, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your close friends, whether it's your sister, your mother, whomever you consider to be someone who is not going to judge you, but who is going to support you on this journey. Now, if nobody comes to mind, what are you going to do? What are you going to do for a support network? These are questions to answer. These are some of the areas we're going to be discussing today. As we look at our tools, I've got 30 days up here because I want you to consider that it takes about 30 days to make or break a habit. Let's call it habit an easier word, but to change something in our life. So we're looking at a 30-day challenge, in, and this is just some of the areas, okay, that I'm talking about. You'll have more of your own. As you work through your own soul purpose map, you will discover areas where you also need to maybe take on your own 30-day challenge. This is something called the Power Hour. Again, uh, my mentor, Garrett J. White, the Master Coach mentor that I've talked about in previous videos, he created something called the Power Hour quite a while ago, and I still think it's, it's quite brilliant, especially if we're starting down this journey. And it's a great way to keep us focused and on track in all of these areas, of all of these three planes of the Soul Purpose Pyramid. Working on the body, working on the mind, working on the spirit. What I encourage you to do is start in the morning. Now, because the kids aren't at home, and you're not raising the kids, you don't have to get up and out of bed and make them breakfast and make their lunch and get them out the door to school. And if that's not an issue, and it's just you in the mornings, most mornings, I invite you to start your day this way. And on those days when you have to be somewhere at a certain time, I challenge you to get up an hour early just so you can take on the power hour. And what the Power Hour does is it gets you out of bed, and of course we're all pretty groggy in the morning. Our body is groggy, our head is groggy. It's just not a good place to kind of jump into something. And especially if you think, I just got to get my clothes on and out the door and go. If you're not prepared for the day, it doesn't necessarily set the best tone. So here's what you can do. You get out of bed, you take care of the usual bodily functions in the morning, and you get yourself woken up, or at least the body woken up. 
And, and so you deal with the, the bodily functions first. And as you're doing that, you'll notice that your mind is starting to kick in. And it's starting to chatter away at you. So, okay, your mind is up too. I encourage you to start looking at a workout first thing. After the body is, is a, a bit more awake, maybe, maybe it takes half an hour for you to do that. Um, but start working out. Yoga. Yoga is wonderful. Check out yoga. Check out some um, gentle yoga postures if you don't know anything about it at first. But what yoga does is it, it activates the body, mind, and spirit all at once, but it also gets your body moving and stretching in very gentle ways. And it's wonderful, particularly if you haven't done any sort of exercise for a very long time. After that, we're going to work on the mind. Okay, All of the stuff that was in our mind yesterday was still in our mind when we went to bed and maybe it was reactivated in the form of dreams or maybe it was just lying dormant and now that we're awake it's bubbling up to the surface. Either way, the mind needs to be cleared so that you can start with basically a clean slate today. So, meditation. Now you can sit and do some deep breathing with your eyes closed. You can put your legs in lotus position, you can have your feet plant it on the floor. You can actually take a meditative walk. We talked about going for walks and being totally present and focused. That can be a form of meditation. Again, you will have done some investigative research and you will find things that you'd like to try or things that work for you and you want to keep trying. So that will be next. Meditation and spirit. Remember these books that you're looking into? Remember these little audio recordings or videos? Now is your chance to really start getting into them. What book are you going to read? Because now that the mind has been sort of purged of all the stuff from yesterday, let's start by filling it back up with something that is nurturing, nurturing to our spirit. I challenge you to do this each and every morning for 30 days. No excuses. Now, if, if something is happening and you just can't do it in the morning, don't let it slide. Find a place to do it in the day, even if you have to split it up. Find a time to work out. Find a time to meditate. Find a time to do your spiritual homework. 30 days, no excuses. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to concede your excuses for not doing it? To surrender those in order to get this done? 